quick judgment comes to my mind. Quick judgment. Quick judgment. Judgment is something called tat, tatva vichar, tatva vivek, tatva vichar. It's that there's judgment there. And if judgment is made by Guru, Shastra, and Sadhu, that is definitely very valuable and very important. And this is actually the, this, the section of the scriptures and the uh, Vaishnava discussions, which is also called Siddhanta. We have to know the Siddhanta. What is the Siddha? Perfection of the understanding of bhakti, bhakti siddhanta. So there is some necessity of judgment. What is kanishta madhyam buddha? What are the, the different special specialties in Krishna's rasa as well. Because it's not to up to our judgment, we can just hear about it. We can read Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu Bindu. Hear about the description Upadeshamrita Bhakti. There are all these all this beautiful description. But Tatvavichar, Bhakti Siddhanta is is very necessary sometimes. But to be judgmental is very dangerous. There may be some prejudice mixed into it. And if that's so, it may be harmful to bhakti. I remember once, I won't mention names, but Srila Bhakti, Rakakshina Maharaj, he sent the names for our deities in Colombia. He said they should be called Radha Brajaswara. Though we have many names of Krishna and Vrindavan here, but you don't hear of a very famous deity called Brajaswara. So then of course, I embraced this name with all the joy of my heart coming from my Sanyas and Chiksha Guru. <coughs> and then one day, on Gaudiya Mat Sanyasi, he heard, he said, what are your deities names? And I said, Goranga Rana Brajaswara. He said, that name is wrong. Brajaswara, that is Nanda Maharaj. That is not Krishna. And of course, who, who, who was I to say anything? Said, Guru Dev gave it in this way. So I didn't become any issue really, but can you imagine you have your deity's name and then some doubt is implanted in your mind whether it is or it isn't. It's, a, it's a not, not so palatable because your Lord's name, which you chant and meditate. Anyhow, here in this song of Jiva Jiva Goswami, he is calling Krishna Vrindavaneshwara, same as Brajaswara. So, yes, Krishna is also called upon his king sometimes. <coughs> Even though at some point you may say Nanda Maharaj is king, king also, but in the last, in the final conclusion, it's uh, Vishwabhanu is not the king. Vindavaneshwar is the queen. <coughs> yes, we hear King Vishabhanu, Queen Kirtira, but Vindavaneshwar, that's Radhi. So, anyhow, this just came to my mind when I was reading this, this Vindavaneshwara of Jiva Goswami, that sometimes we judge things too fast, maybe because it's not common. It's not Radha Govinda, Radha Mata Mohan, Radha Gopita, everybody has Pur, that's Krishna's name. But Krishna is also king of Raj. Well, there has been some dispute about that, by the way. Because 
This is actually one of the main Brajlilas. It is the dispute that the gopis, they are saying, Radha is the queen. You know, in England, even today, they have a queen. They don't have a king. Because Queen Elizabeth is the queen and, and her her husband is is just a prince or something like that. So here we go in Vrindavan. <coughs> there was the discussion. The gopis and the gopis made a ceremony to enthrone Radharani's the queen. And then they were challenged by the gopas. Hey, what's going on here? <coughs> Krishna's the, the king. And then there was a whole big history. This, this is a lengthy pastime which takes place every year between Nandagal and Varshana. And it ends up in a heavy beating of the gopas. There is you. You will not believe it, but the gopis come out with big sticks. And the the gopas, they have to prepare for that. And they are ready, they already have some shields so that they can hold them up when the big stick comes down on them. <laughs> so this is this Brachilila, this is going on, this is enacted. This is you could call it the folklore, the divine folklore of Braj. Every year, holy. Then the big holy festival, flowers, joy, joy. Because finally they settle, king and queen. Huh? Finally it is settled. Because why should they fight? Radha and Krishna, they are eternally united anyway. <coughs> but there was some dispute anyhow, and a very juicy, very juicy dispute. Sometimes devotees have disputes. If they're as juicy as this dispute, <laughs> maybe maybe by Krishna's churning the nectar that some disputes may arise. <laughs> like, like the most incredible pastimes of Krishna in Braj. No, they are they I mean, what did Krishna say? Nanda Baba. Don't waste your time worshipping Indra. And the Baba says, but Krishna, we do this every year. Our forefathers have also done so. We are doing this Indra Puja for having nice rainfall for our crops so that our cows can eat nice fresh green grasses. So, yeah, Baba, that's okay, but you know, we should worship Govardhan. I like Govardhan better than Indra. Govardhan is giving the green grasses and Govardhan is giving the fresh water and everything. Okay, said Nanda Baba said. Then we will, will first worship Indra and we make a puja for Govardhan. No, Baba, no, Baba, no need for that. I mean, Krishna was churning the pastime, you know, he was saying. Forget about Indra, you see. He throws his water on the ocean where nobody needs any water. So don't bother with him, he'll do his job anyway. And then because Nanda Baba is so enamored with little Krishna, Krishna, you know, insisting in this way. Okay, let's do it. So this lead lies. We have discussed it several times in this karting, you know. Govinda, Govinda Kunda. <coughs> the Leela, the terrible ego explosion of the rebellious senses of Lord Indra, which are actually, like Srila Bhakti Balakrindamart told us, he says the Govardhan is where the senses reach its <coughs> connectedness with Krishna's sweet will. Like getting your spiritual body. See, 
the actual meaning of the mercy of Govardhan for the devotees, transferal, transformation of the senses from mundane senses of selfishness to divine senses of pleasure giving efforts for Krishna's sweet pastimes. That is uh, part of this Leela, Vindavan Leela, the Nista Vindavan Leela, where <coughs> demons come and interrupt the sweet pastimes. Get scared. Dark skies. Sridhavarta approaching. All this kind of the earth trembles. Arista Sura is coming in with all his big ego. Or the tricky Agasura lies there and creates a false environment of beauty with a curious cave, which is nothing but the fangs of. Agasura, waiting for Krishna the Gopas to come in. <coughs> see, when you see a cave, you usually become curious to explore what's inside. We have a few of such caves. I'm very curious about caves. So the Gopas were also curious. So they went in. They went in so deep that Krishna said, "Oh, oh, they are they are lost. They are gone." I better go after them, make sure they're safe. And Agasura was only waiting for Krishna to come in. <coughs> and that was a terrible mistake Agasura made. Because that cost him the piercing of his belly. And Krishna saving everybody. So, in the Krishna Leela, even even apparent death shows up. Apparent. Or, or kind of like when Kaliya, when Kaliya uh, poisoned the Yamuna, then the Gopas and the calves, they, they lay senseless. <coughs> like they were dead. After having drunk the poisonous water of Kaliya. But Krishna is above death so you can reawaken them and all these things is just enhancing. So Vindavan is definitely a mystical place, miraculous place. Everything happening is for enhancing our Feelings for Krishna. It's all about feelings for Krishna. Feelings. <coughs> feeling, feeling, feeling. <coughs> Premic. Premic feelings. <coughs> and those premic feelings, they are the the pass of which take a devotee to spontaneous, ecstatic, loving surrender within the realm of his peculiar nature. So feelings are so important. Krishna's churning of feelings. Rather than his churning of feelings. Even Guru is churning our feelings because he inspires us. Like I can say about my own little experience, and what <coughs> hit me the most with my Guru Devas the whole time, he said, "Incredible trust he put in a soul." conditioned soul like myself. So much trust. 
started from the very beginning because Prabhupada was creating his mission with the participation of absolute newcomers. I mean, I wasn't two years in the movement. I was in Sweden and I had to decide who takes the initiation, send the recommendation, get the beads, make the fire, yak yas, everything. Here you were, little kid. <laughs> And doing all of this because Prabhupada trusted us so much, so much love and trust. So he churned our feelings. Then, <coughs> that it even lasts until today. <coughs> Turn it off. The first thing you should do in such a horrible 
with solid caps. <coughs> Technical solutions. How about there are movements based on this love and trust? So the movement of Shiva Prabhupada is based on this love and trust. So the devotees amongst each other sometimes don't have this intensive love and trust. That immediately produces some kind of conflict. But the guru, the guardian, the shiksha guru just as well, he works on the power of love and trust. And this love and trust, it is implemented by giving you certain type of charge. Of course, then you are also supposed to respond to this charge in a very responsible manner. And that's where sometimes the differences come up that somebody's not responding so intensively with real efforts to the trust put in him. Like sometimes we have to change a temple dress because he's not doing his duty well. Like I remember one of my god brothers, he was voted out of the presidency and came to India and Prabhupada was there and he complained to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, yes, what happened? They told me I shouldn't be the president anymore. I was trying to do my duty there. And Prabhupada said, so how did this happen? Well, they said together they voted and they said they didn't want me as president anymore. Oh, Prabhupada said, yeah, if they don't want you as president, then you shouldn't be president. And he was thinking that Prabhupada was going to send a missile there. No? <laughs> How did you remove this person from presidency when I put him there? But Prabhupada was very creative and very respectful towards the opinion of the devotees. So a president <laughs> has to be confirmed by his performance in the devotee community. This is a reality. And if you live without that reality, then maybe you have something where the temple president maintains himself in his position by creating a certain amount of fear. And people may say, oh, he's a president, we cannot oppose him because he's going to say something to our guru negative about us or something or like that. That's not the principle of Krishna consciousness. It doesn't work in this way. The principle of Krishna consciousness is actually that commitment churned in your heart by that love and trust you receive. And if you don't respond to that, then Krishna will make some other type of arrangement because Krishna is the final control of everything. But what's the positive development? That is definitely based on love and trust. Where there is something very good coming from it. And this is what our... That's what our... Our joy in this world is that my Guru trusts me. He trusts me. He loves me. He wants.
wants me to do this. He wants me to be out there in New York by myself against everybody. And Prabhupada, like for example, he used to impress upon us that the temple president, he should not feel that he is responsible for the ten devotees in the temple. The temple president should feel that I am responsible for all of the people in the city where I am. My Guru Dev sent me to the city to do the service, top service representing him in this city or in this country. We're in charge of a whole country. And what a beautiful feeling is this. Of course, it can also get to your mind and create an ego. And then it may not be so good. But for example, let's say you're temple president in Quito, Ecuador. Then you should think, what's going on in this city? Oh, they have a big fair where they all go in the street and have showing all this, like, make a declaration. Like many fairs like this, parades take place. So then you can think, oh, we should also have a Krishna parade. One time we made Rasa Yatra parade on the Bogota City Fair Parade which was attended by all the media and, and which was somebody turn off that light which was attended by all uh, by thousands and thousands of people sometimes when you go and make Rasa Yatra you may go off they send you off to the street with a few cars and not, not many people on it you know and so when, when we made our Rasa Yatra with the city, city uh, parade, my God, it went everywhere. So it was a very good, good approach. So when you're in charge of a city, then you should be concerned what are the festivals here, what is the local events going on, when and how can we participate in that. How can we connect to the people and show them that we care for you? Because caring for others, that means the beginning of love and trust. First you care for somebody and then you connect with them and then you have to trust them. And then a loving relationship actually develops. trust. A very, very delicate, very delicate element of our daily life. And if my guru still believes in somebody, I should not be the first one to reject him. This doesn't suit me at all. Of course, if I know about somebody doing detrimental things for Krishna consciousness, I may take it upon myself to inform my guru about it so that he'll be alerted to the fact that somebody is not a good representative. But I should not be eager to reject somebody who is in the good standing of my guru is trying to save him from whatever uh, difficulties he's going through. Don't forget, we are all going through some kind of difficulties always. This is the world of difficulties. So if you say, yeah, but I only want to associate with devotees who have no difficulties at all then you may have a problem to not find anybody to associate with. So it's not the appropriate approach. Rather you should always look in love and trust. The feeling for Krishna will uplift, will uplift my consciousness from the lower regions to the highest regions. Everything is there in this, uh, this 
in this very special mood. So Krishna's churning our feelings. Prabhupada is churning, churning our feelings. And you have to churn the feelings of those who are under your care. Or like you're going on sinking. Or you give a class. Well, how do you do that? <coughs> Hello. How are you? Huh? You look at people's eyes, they look at you. And if everybody goes, oh, oh, you just said something wrong. <laughs> you can say something wrong. You can offend people verbally. So it's not that everything you say is 100% assured to be right? Not at all. So, it's a delicate thing. You go in the kitchen, it's delicate to put out a good breakfast and a good lunch. And if it's not so, people would say, sorry, this cook, no thanks. <laughs> so it is being tested. Every day and every moment our performance is being tested. So in this way, churning some appreciation. Now, I want to get your love to give it to my Guru and Krishna. I don't want to get your love for me to keep it for me and nobody else. It's not love, that's lust. So it's, but I'm talking to you and sometimes I make a little joke and sometimes I try to, to tell a story which is really heart-moving story or I appeal to your sense of responsibility. Come on, let's do it. Especially when we're planning cleaning jobs, or like today, Gopinath Mandir Rasa Purnima uh, service, mm, then I appeal to responsibility. It's nice if we do that. We have the duty to show that we can do, make a difference. Because everybody in his service should try to make a difference. Because if there's no difference in what you do, then you feel like, why should I do it? If it's already done, everybody's doing it, or it's, it's nothing. So, some other devotional service always means making the difference. Shringa means making the difference. The most beautiful flower arrangement, the most beautiful altar decoration, the most beautiful music presentation, the most beautiful, it's always, in one way or another, within our limited capacity, we are always trying to make the difference. Devotion is a question of details, of making the difference. And some people are, are very peculiar about that. And they have different styles. For example, I, in Goliamat, I know people, they take a half an hour to put on their tea. When I see it, I'm getting totally amazed. Oh, they're making the difference with their tea luck. It's so peculiar in paint, and they have all boxed. This, and that, and this. Put on the tea luck, no? And I respect that. They're making the difference in the tea luck. I feel like. I put on my tea luck in less than a minute. Uh, uh, I don't even have time to look at the mirror. You know, I have no mirror. Just hopefully it doesn't look too too crazy. Uh, anyway, that's one extreme and another extreme. You know, but it's a devotion. It's just it. It's the it's full of details. And why do I rush so much with the tea luck? It's because I think I have other things that are more important to do and I have to look after them. Otherwise, I mean, painting a tea 
like this beautiful thing, you know, because you're meditating about Lord Vishnu. My dear Lord, please put your lotus feet on my forehead so that my dirty brain will get purified by the influence of your presence. And let me put this little tulasi leaf of my heart at your feet so that you may accept me as one of yours eternally dedicated to your feet. Om Keshavaya Namaha. Like this. Om Nanaya Namaha. Om Manavaya Namaha. So like this, it's, a, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful ritual. Enchanting. So the details to make the difference, all these things, they are they're really part of the responsibility. And when your guru impresses upon you a certain kind of urgency, then this will impact you. Like one time Prabhupada, he said something which drove people crazy. He said, I will take the feet of that of my disciples upon my head who preaches in the Muslim countries. Did you hear that? <coughs> the devotees went like, <coughs> I mean, no devotee wants to put his foot on the head of the guru, to be sure for that. But Prabhupada made such an extreme declaration was like, what did he say? Did you hear that? What does it mean? He wants us to preach in the Muslim countries. He wants us to go to the Muslim countries. Saudi Arabia, you know that? If you preach in Saudi Arabia, cut off your head. It's prohibited by law for preaching another religious past in Saudi Arabia to finish. And other countries, they have other strange laws. So what happened? Well, we already knew Atreya Rishi was in Tehran and Prabhupada went there. Then Dayananda actually went to teach English in Saudi Arabia to make underground preaching. Uh, careful. Have you heard about Krishna? <laughs> Krishna knows Krishna. Please, Krishna is important. You can chant his name. <laughs> yes, can I do that? <laughs> if you want, I give you Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> yeah, that was thank you. When I went to preach in communist country, it was totally prohibited. So what did I do? I went into Berlin, Eastern Berlin was communist capital, by civil dress. I went with my pants, which I never wear, otherwise pants and everything. I went over the border to stamp the passport. Then I went into the toilet, and in the toilet I pulled out my dhoti and my kurta, and I put the, the other things in my bag, my pants, and I walked out of the toilet with tilak and everything. Imagine I put on the tilak in the toilet. <laughs> because you couldn't do that visible. Hmm? Sometimes you bend the rules for certain things, no? So I came out like a Paka Brahmachari, uh, Tilak, everything, Japa, and my preaching was walking. Walking and chanting Japa. And doing like I was a touring monk or something. And I went everywhere and people looked at me, you know. Staring. Who is this guy? What phenomena? And people would come up to me and talk to me. And when they found
found out that I spoke German. Oh my God. You are not a German. Yes. What is this all about? Well, my Guru Dev Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he wanted the whole world to know about divine love. Really? Tell me more about it. Then I first had to investigate the guy, whether he was a spy or he was genuine. I had to, my system, I had to like see if they, their questions were very formal. Then I would just say formal answers and not. But if I felt they were genuine, I took the telephone number. Then on Saturday, I went and I called all of them. Tomorrow and Sunday, we are going to be in this bar in the corner. So if you want to hear and see a bhakti yoga program, come there. So then I used to come on Sundays, the same thing, bathroom, put on the toti. It was always the same ritual. Because you couldn't bring one book. They were very strict, the communists at that time. So then we went in the park and there were eight, ten, sometimes thirty people. And we had a kirtan and Sometimes some other devotees came over and brought some prashad. Later we cooked something there when we had the first address where we could go to. Very sick. It was very, very... You know, in Hungary, they used to say, if somebody knocks at your door at 6 o'clock in the night, that was the secret policy. They were going to take you and nobody knows where you were going to go. That was very scary. So. They had temples in Hungary. They were like box temples, suitcase temples. So if somebody knocked at the door, first you close the suitcase. Let's see who's coming here. Oh, he's a friend. Open the altar again. So it, it was scary. People went to jail in Germany, in Hungary, in Russia. The bodies were persecuted. There was. It was an underground movement. So in this way, Prabhupada said, preach in the communist countries, preach in, this, in the Muslim countries. Oh. Some devotees went to Beirut. Tribhuvana Prabhu went to Beirut. And so Morocco. Because Prabhupada had said that some devotees went to preach in Pakistan also. So, because Prabhupada had said such a thing, it churned our feelings. Prabhupada was very expert to churn our feelings and to draw the sacrifice and love and trust from his disciples. He made us feel Yes, let's do it. Let's go it. Go get her. They, they call it. Go and get it. What Prabhupada wanted, become a go getter. And some of the devotees were very extreme in this. I mean, we have outstanding examples. And sometimes they were in danger. One time, two devotees traveled through Pakistan and they were lost for many days and Prabhupada was so worried. Finally, they showed up in Vendan and Prabhupada hugged them. Very, oh, you're safe, you're safe. Because put yourself in danger also sometimes. The devotees in preaching Krishna consciousness, they have put themselves in danger. Big danger. In Germany, for example, we had a storefront right in front of Kurfürstendamm, which is the number one road of commerce. So we had a we had a very incredible place. Three stories. I got that building. Krishna's mercy. We we were inventing some little backyard uh, uh, 
neighborhood, nobody would go. So we thought we need to preach more. And somehow that I got this three-story storefront uh, in Berlin, in, in the Gouda. <coughs> so one day, one devotee who is actually here in Vindavan right now, <coughs> he was visiting and he was chanting Japa. And he was chanting Japa and sitting in front of the altar. And outside there were cars parked. And there was some very strong movement against the devotees also sometimes. So the devotee was just finished the round and just went down. At that moment he bowed his head for Dandavats. A bullet flew through the window of the shop storefront and right where his head would have been if he wouldn't have done his obeisances right there. And then the car took off. So people were not so happy with you going and telling them Christians are not giving the highest truth. Christians don't like to hear that. Christians are very heavy people <clears throat> and they used to kill any opposition that was their style. Killing people for Christians that was normal. Of course they are not real Christians, that's another subject here, no? But killing people who are opposing you So, I mean to tell you the truth, today they still kill people if they're against you. Only they do it hiddenly, back, back around, they don't come out. Before they do it in front, before the Christians used to kill the people in public so that everybody can see if you go against the church, you will be killed. I don't think India ever had such rude and stupid things. I mean, we have heard of some stupid kings as well, but basically, Sarvishu Kendu Bhavantu, everybody has to be happy, there's so much freedom. In the, in the religious pluralism of India, there has always been a lot of tolerance. Yes. That's the Muslims, that's not the, it's not the Hindu tolerance I was referring to. Uh, I was taught amongst them. Yeah, of course, the Muslims, they are very ruthless also. So, we can see that the, the actual situation for service of Guru you take risks. You take risks. I mean, when we go in Garuja, in taking Lord Jagannath on the beach with all the devotees and the brahmacharis and sannyasis uh, dancing with Lord Jagannath down the beach and all the half-naked people are... Yes, dear Santos, all the half-naked people are clapping and, and smiling and looking, you know. That's a pretty, pretty unique scenery. Huh? I don't know what a conservative orthodox Vaishnava would say if he sees this picture of Lord Jagannath surrounded by bikinis dancing. And, and doing things like that. It's definitely not the most, the most common sight. But if you want to do and bring people to Krishna, you know, that's what to do. Special things, you know. It was like this. Anyway, <coughs> the issue of serving to Guru and feelings for the gurus, what he says and, and what he does and how he includes me 
That's the life-saving college. You see, sometimes we admire the secretaries. Oh, you were servant of Prabhupada. Oh, wow. Oh, you were his secretary. You wrote his letters. Oh, you cooked for Prabhupada personally and served him the meal. And we go like, oh, oh my God. Prabhupada had a few such services. Maybe he had a guard in front of his door, no? and you could serve as Prabhupada's guard. So it was like the feeling was there that the closer you get to the Guru physically, the better. But it's also very dangerous. It's called familiarity breeds contempt. On one side. On the other side, people became puffed up. I don't have a secretary in front of my door. You may have noticed. Because I don't want to tell anybody to tell others, oh, you cannot come in here. I don't want that. Because I've seen it, it has been abused so many times. <laughs> Even Sadhu Maharaj, when he went to Sri Srila Prabhupada, there was secretary, no, Prabhupada's busy. <laughs> Prabhupada's busy, cannot come in. And he said, oh, I just wanted to take, take his blessings. No, he's busy. The Prabhupada behind the secretary, he asked, who is there? Huh? It was in the, he could hear it somehow in that place. And so they said, oh, and then he was asked to come in. So many people have been turned away at some guru's door by some secretary who, who thought he knows who should see Guru Dev and who not. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I cannot take it. So I don't have, if you want to, if anybody wants to talk to me, just walk up to me, give me a piece of paper, this is what I need to talk about, and that's it. You don't have to go through formalities. So, anyhow, <coughs> time, place, and circumstances. But the point is the proximity with the Guru doesn't make you more intimate. It's not true. If you go away, if you go away to the other side of the world on behalf of the Guru, and you keep him in your heart, and you do service for him, you're more intimately connected with him than the one who's sitting next to him and who's like speculating, oh now I've become so important because I'm with Guru Dev. But you are, oh you, have, you don't know anything about Guru Dev. I was sitting there. Maybe yes, maybe no. So this is a very delicate situation. But the journey of love and trust and all these things, that really makes like, if I think about you, because you're going to Miami today. I'm thinking of you as my very trusted representative. Of course, Miami is a little story of its own. But we can always preach. We can all, always participate. And we can always make beautiful programs for the children. We cannot expect the Guru to organize the children programs. He has no time for that. Or he's doing it in general and giving material like Dabodadoti. But my dream is a very wonderful temple. A real temple spirit. Of course, in a sophisticated way for Ecuador and Gopal. And you there, looking and making everybody happy. This is my feeling. This is my desire. And 
Vrindavaneshwari. Hmm. My God, what a responsibility. Like this, I'm thinking about each and every one. Govardhan in Manhattan, my goodness, you know. The rotten apple huh? in the hands of Govardhan and Radhika. <clears throat> That's a tough one. Huh? But very special because you are there with Prabhupada met. So you, I'm always thinking of you. I'm always thinking how they are doing, how they are touching the people's heart. Will they be able to talk in English or in Spanish? Are we going to make a satellite nation there, a Spanish satellite? <laughs> You know, it's very difficult. The communication between Spanish speaking and English speaking in America is like two worlds. And then there's the third world, are the, the dark body uh, <coughs> population. So it's very ethnically segregated there. Of course, in one sense, we don't care because we preach to the ones who want to listen to us. But the segregation. It's not, that's not so positively and searched for because it means I mean mine, I and my clan. That's why Brazil is called the <coughs> melting pot of nations because they have been cooking it up there with so much Brazilian heat that the whole country has become a melting pot and you have all the nations mixed together, Japanese and everything. And somehow, but even there, segregation is there, no? Even there, it's not always so easy. But more easy. Less, less racism, you could say. You know, oligarchic systems, oligarchic societies, they're 100% racist. And neocolonialism thinking is totally racist, only the racism often goes by the economy. If you have money, you are somebody. If you don't have money, you are nobody. So they have uh, not so much by the skin color touch, judged by but this all this foolishness, huh? We don't believe in any of that. We believe in loving everybody and serving everybody. But only Prabhupada could put us all together. <laughs> you know, to put us all together, Prabhupada's ability was absolutely he should win the Nobel Prize just or oh, that's a useless prize, but he should win the world recognition of how he could put people from all over the world together to work together, to love each other, to respect each other, to have, like for example, Bhakti Tirsaswar, he was a very popular devotee. Everybody loved him, you know, and uh, he was a black body devotee, and he he was very successful also, and a great writer, and book distributor, and later spiritual master, and everybody loved him. So, Prabhupada's ability was very unique. But the Guru, he has a unique consideration for each and every one of his disciples. And if you think, except me, then you're wrong. Then you're wrong. If you think, he loves more this one and that one, he loves more his secretary, I am not so close, he loves more this, it's completely wrong. That's a very duality view. If you think the guru is so dualistic, he only likes the good singers. Or one person said to me, you always spend your time with the people who give a lot of money to the movement. Well, rest assured, that's not true, because nobody's given a lot of money to our movement. <laughs> Number one. Number two. Uh, is not true because we try to blow the flame 
name of devotion on those whose flame is very weak. You know when you when you put like this on the flame, the oxygen level goes up and then it goes shh, 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 shh and the fire comes. No. So when you see somebody who is uh, with a very low flame, then you go shh, Come, 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 sit here, listen. You give some special attention. Whereas when you see somebody's flame is growing, then he's already, oh, you don't worry about it. Huh? <laughs> That's why we say in South America, if you don't cry, you don't get anything to eat. <laughs> so if, they, if the guru sees that you're in trouble, you get attention. If you're all fine, then okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Then he, then he just takes care of you with one look. Okay. See that much? Full power ahead. Good. That was it. Huh? But he says, but we have to talk about Tenerife and next time you have to come for 10 days, he told me. Because now I'm preaching on three islands of, of, of the Tenerife, I mean Tenerife. That's such a beautiful place. It's so extremely beautiful. It's almost Maya. It's, it's almost Maya beautiful. Terrible, look why Krishna makes Maya so beautiful, no? But don't worry about it, love is blind. When you're supposed to be Maya, even something very ugly makes you fall in Maya. <laughs> Nobody is saved by not being around beauty. <laughs> so, anyhow, so everybody wants to feel my service is important. Everybody wants to feel the Guru cares about what am I doing. And if you don't care, then better don't be a Guru. If you don't want the people to get out of the repeated verse and death in the Bhagavatam says, then you should not become a father, mother, guru, teacher, or anything. Be neutral. Guru Like don't be anything if you don't want to save the people from the repeated person. <coughs> Anyhow, when the devotee told me that you spend time with the people, give money, I was deeply insulted in my heart. How somebody can think that way about me, that I will judge a person by that by a monetary consideration. It's nonsense. Another person told me, Oh, you like to talk with the beautiful girls. You don't talk with the elder ladies. Yeah, I was accused like that. They said see all you, the young beautiful girls and then Guru Dev, oh yes, Krishna is God in the heart of night. Or something like that. <laughs> and when it comes an elderly lady with a stick, then Guru Dev says, okay, hi, go. Go, go. That's not true either. It's a, it's a imposing a mundane vision on the spiritual master that's very detrimental for spiritual advancement. So how can you get the attention of your spiritual master? Do something valuable. And show that you need some guidance. Or there's an even more powerful way of getting the Guru's attention. You have to give attention to others as if you would like to have the attention of your guru for you. If you give your attention which you would like to draw from your guru to others, whoever others they may be under your care of new preaching, then you get their affection and the guru.
numerous affections simultaneously. Then your life will be happy. Because that's what our Guru showed us. They gave us so much love and affection. They gave us so much love and trust. They trusted us with everything. Even with the new devotees. And sometimes we hear that. We hear that this and that person he burns out other people by the way they preach. You must have heard that, no? That's that description sometimes happens. That some devotees, in the name of preaching, they're so heavy, heavy, no? And instead of the people becoming happy and wanting to practice Krishna consciousness, they get scared and they run away. Some guest comes into the kitchen and the cook screams, Shoes! Out of here! The poor guest. He didn't know that that was a kitchen and he didn't know that he cannot step in the kitchen with shoes. No. Uh, so in the name of devotion, that person actually just blew somebody away. Uh, just because he couldn't say, Dear friend, Yes, welcome here. Oh yes, may I humbly request you to take off your shoes. This is area of the temple cooking and we treat this like the altar so the street shoes cannot be worn inside here. Is it possible? You just say it nicely and you win a friend for life. And by saying it badly, you may destroy somebody's devotional life because he just came to the temple, he didn't know anything. He didn't know that people screamed there at you. I remember one devotee, he, he, he went into a kitchen with carly clothes and there was a devotee inside and he beat him. He was already initiated everything. He was actually, but the body inside, he started beating him. And the body left. He left. I haven't heard about him again. So. Love and trust means caring for everyone. Maybe some are more close to you. Maybe some of the people you give more time to for whatever reason because they work in your area or so. But your love and care must be for everyone. If it's not for everyone, you're not qualified for leadership. Just because you can scream doesn't make you a good leader. Even if you're very efficient in your own working, your own service, it still doesn't make you a good leader if you're not kind and encouraging with everybody. That is what I have seen in those who I care for. And in those where I have not seen it, I don't care so much. <laughs> it's okay, devotees, but I don't care so much. It's the quality of generosity. When you go, because I'm going from Gaudiyamat to Gaudiyamat, I'm inviting people for Vishwa Vaishnava Shava events, no? So I know very well what it means to be ignored or to be well received or to find really kindness, really caring. Wow. I, I know all the fine tones of it, you know, from suspicion towards rejection, or rejection to suspicion, to indifference, to uh, kind of acceptance, you know what you do, I do what I do, uh, to appreciate.
appreciation, to curiosity, to heartfelt welcome, to identified, open to listen about. I mean, there's such an array of different types of how you are received. Hmm? It's colorful. And they are, to my understanding, different adhikars. This is how, how deeply people have realized the message of Lord Chaitanya. How much interest, how much openness, how much time they give. Like that. So this is a... It's not automatic. You're not automatic and advance the vote. You're not automatically doing it always right. There's a very good chance of you doing it wrong and blowing it. And you should. So therefore you should learn. And the top lesson you should always learn the absolute top lesson. Is to be a genuine representative of your group. Because that's your connection with him. How would he do? Because you don't know completely, but you try your best. Then the inspiration will come, will guide you to do it right. If you want to do it the right way, you'll be learning quickly how